Like all railway stations, big railway stations, they're a place of arrival and departure. People are milling around. When the station was built in the 1850s, within years, within a very short period of time, people came to the area to start their lives, to move from different parts of the country. There were people everywhere. Often, there were a lot of men coming down, men from Ireland, the north, looking for work, looking for work on the railway. And women were there to service those men. Particularly during the war, American and Canadian servicemen would go to King's Cross and pick up prostitutes and, and find places in the little hotels in the area. Because by the 1930s, there were hotels everywhere. King's Cross was a place where you stayed the night. And certainly from the 1930s, it was a place that you could stay by the hour. In the 1960s and 70s, when King's Cross became less populated, the council were decanting the old council blocks. A lot of young people moved to the area, students, artists, because it was cheap, because they were fascinated by the King's Cross area, the gas works, the railway station, the old Dickensian back streets, the rubble, the atmosphere of, of King's Cross was very, very, very interesting. What happened to them? It's like all these areas. The areas get bought up. Cheap property becomes expensive property. The artists move on. King's Cross Station was designed by Cubitt, Lewis Cubitt. At the time, it was the largest railway station in the United Kingdom. But the approach is very modernistic. It's very, very economical. It has two very beautiful lunettes, which you can look through and see the huge, arching interior of, of the station. The station, when it was created, had an enormous function because it was created for the, the, the Great Northern Railway. And the Great Northern Railway was exploring through the railway tracks all the way up to Scotland. In 1973, the IRA attacked King's Cross Station. From what we know, it was a young assassin um, who threw a bomb into the forecourt of King's Cross Station. Many people were injured. And if you want to make a statement, and perhaps a cruel statement in the case of terrorism, King's Cross is the place to attack. So everyone will fear for the lives of their friends, family, or someone they know. Because anyone could be going through King's Cross at any moment in time. The area had originally been called Battle Bridge. And for years and years, if you lived in the area, you, were, you would say you were from Battle Bridge. But the name was lost by as soon as this statue was built in the 1830s. And so the name was known in the area as King's Cross. And the first building to survive to this day with the name King's Cross is the station. The statue was a statue of King George IV, and it was built in the crossroads of roads we know today as Euston Road and the Gray's Inn Road. And the statue was enormous, it was 60 foot high, and it had a statue, and right on top of the statue, a um, big building on top of the building was King George IV. And the, and the building had lots of different uses. For a while, it was a brewery and it was, a, it was used as, a, as an off-license to sell beer. It was also used as a police station for a bit, but the building was ugly, no one really liked it, and it only lasted 10 years, and it was known as King's Cross. On November the 18th, 1987, a terrible fire. In those days, smoking had just been outlawed on the tube. It was only a few years earlier that smoking had been outlawed, and what people used to do is that people used to light up just as they was getting up the escalator. And a match must have dropped through the escalator and ignited with all the oil and the muck that was on underneath the escalator. It was mostly a wooden contraption. 31 people were killed and many injuries. Lots of the churches locally were very, very involved helping the grieving and helping the families of, of, um, of, of those people who had lost their lives. And it wasn't until only recently that the 31st person to have died in that fire was identified as an elderly Scottish man. He'd been unknown for nearly 20 years. The view from the top from the roof was fantastic, just to see the trains coming in and out. And I remember just the view at dusk particularly, just as the, as the, just as the sunset is, is, is appears. And this fantastic view over the railway tracks, the gas holders, and illuminated by the descending sun was fantastic. King's Cross for many years had been neglected 
it had been lost in a, a previous history. And so with this huge regeneration, with people coming into King's Cross to St Pancras International Station every day from Europe, people leaving, going to Europe from St Pancras, it's going to create much more of a buzz and atmosphere and it's going to have an extraordinary impact. One thing we're not sure about is what impact it's going to have on the local people, the residential community, the people that have lived here for either generations or more recent arrivals. How that is going to impact on their lives is difficult to say. Optimistically, it would be great to think they will gain a lot from the place being so vibrant and so exciting, and potentially jobs could come from it. Um, on the other side, one wonders whether possibi the possibilities of the, the commercialization of the King's Cross area will have a more of a derogatory impact on those people that may not be able to access that commercialism. It's a unique place, but King's Cross future could go anywhere because no one really knows what the next step is for King's Cross because a new city is going to evolve there.